What is up guys? Welcome back to another wrong build video. This time the Ford Mustang, the 1965 Ford Mustang. People have been requesting this like crazy. I've been getting a lot of comments on this car. Really, everybody wanted to see this car on the wrong build series. So here it is. Let's go. All right, guys, you know I like to get right into the video and I give you the most important piece of information right here at the front because I know not everybody has time to watch a 20 minute video. Now, if you guys are new to this wrong build series, you can go back and look at some of my older videos, the ones I've done months ago, and I explain how this series works and what I do to test these engines. But speaking of the engine, let's give you the engine first because that's the important part of this video. The best engine for this 65 Mustang is definitely the 721 horsepower forged 3.8 liter V6. I know some people wanted that V8 in there. There's also a V12 option, but this forged 3.8 V6 is definitely the best engine for the car. It ran the fastest time that I could run on Arian when I was doing my testing. So let's take a look at the build that I have so far. This is pretty much the full track build. I don't have any more testing to do for track racing. Uh, I did all of that that testing already before I went to film the video. So I'm gonna give you the full track build now, and then we're gonna try to build it for drag, drift, and off-road. And then I'll show you where this car ranks amongst the other cars that I've tested. All right, so go ahead and throw up that build card. Let's see what this thing looks like, fully built in a track capacity. So we got that 721 horsepower forged 3.8 liter V6. We're rocking all Ultimate Plus parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo and the Ultimate 5x3 pound NOS. On the chassis, we've got the Super Track suspension, the Elite brakes, and the Elite race tires. For the drivetrain, Elite Plus clutch, Elite seven speed gearbox, and the super track differential. Pretty standard track build right here. The most important part of this is actually gonna be the live tuning. So we'll take it outside the garage and give that to you in just a second. Auxiliaries, I run NOS refills and NOS duration. All right, let's see what this thing looks like in terms of its live tuning. All right, so the live tuning we've got on here is a plus three steering sensitivity, plus one on the downforce, traction control off and drift style on brake now this is a huge change i usually prefer the drift style to be gas but in this particular case if you put it to brake it actually allows you to increase the downforce just a little bit which gives you traction out of the turns now this is a very minor adjustment and if you prefer you can actually drop the downforce it'll give you a little bit more top speed and you can run the drift style on gas this is how i prefer to run this car this is how the car feels the best to me but these settings are really just for your personal preference. Now, obviously drift style doesn't always need to be brake. You guys can play with that however you would like and in whatever feels better for you. All right, before we move on to the drag build, let's just for a quick moment, let's take a look at this amazing wrap by Surfy. This thing is insanely clean. I just wanna congratulate Surfy as well for having 18,000 downloads for this particular wrap. Let's go back into the garage. I'm gonna show you how you can get this wrap if you're on Xbox. All right, from the garage, what you wanna do is go to customization, paint and wrap, then go over to community. And then you can look at the trending, the most recent, the most popular, the most, uh, or your followed, excuse me, your followed artist. If you followed OMG Surfy, look in the top left of the screen right now, made by OMG Surfy. That's who you wanna follow if you wanna get these wraps. And uh, this will definitely be in the most popular section. These wraps have the most downloads. This one has 18,000. So you're gonna wanna scoot all the way over till you see 18,000 on the downloads. OMG Surfy, it's right there in the most popular. He's the number 16 most popular wrap on this. That's how you get it if you're on Xbox. All right, let's turn this thing into a drag car. First, we're gonna need to change this NOS like always. You gotta have that one by 15 pound tank. The chassis, we're gonna leave alone except for the tires. Let's take a look at our stats and then swap the tires over to a drag tire. Let's make sure this is giving us a better performance zero to 60 wise, because if not, then we don't wanna sw switch to the drag tires. So it is, so we're gonna go ahead and 
swap to the drag tires. Now we will be testing the gearbox just by looking at the quarter mile after we leave the garage and the differential is going to be track. Everything else is the same. So the potential three parts you want to change for drag build are the NOS, the tires, and maybe the gearbox. It just depends on what it looks like on the quarter mile. So let's take it out the garage and uh, let's see what the quarter mile looks like. All right, with this drag setup, we're looking at an 8.83 quarter mile. It's actually kind of on the slow side actually. So what we'll do is drop our downforce down, should give us an extra 300th of a second, and it does 8.80. Steering sensitivity is not really that important for this one, but we'll leave it there. And then let's go ahead and swap to the four speed gearbox. We're gonna go up in numerical order, four, five, six, seven, and see which one is gonna be the best. So with the four speed in here, it's actually nine, five, three. That is horrible. It's just horrible. All right, let's <laughs> let's switch to the five here. Let's see, five speed. And we've got eight, nine, three, still worse than the seven. Performance, let's go back to the six speed. All right, here we go, six speed. Six speed actually gives you a better quarter mile. This is pretty interesting because the six speed really didn't perform better for me when I was racing it on the track. I tested all the gearboxes when I was going through the engines and the six speed was close, but not as good as the seven for racing, but it's better for drag racing. Now, most common, like really professional drag cars have the fewest number of gears to maximize the horsepower and torque. And in this case, this makes sense. Now, with that logic, you would think that maybe the four speed would be better, but for some reason it's not. This is the best gearbox for drag racing. I would go with a six speed over the seven for drag racing. Everything else can stay the same. Let's go ahead and throw up the build card. This is the drag build. Here we go. All right, so that same Forge 3.8 V6 with the Ultimate Plus parts and Ultimate Dual Turbo. On the chassis, we're going with the track suspension, uh, super track suspension, I should say. And, uh, oh, I forgot. The 1 by 15 pound NOS, don't forget that. Elite brakes, elite drag tires, elite plus clutch, super plus six speed gearbox, and the super track differential. The auxiliaries are your choice, but I go with refills and NOS duration. NOS duration is really gonna help you out on the quarter mile, so I would definitely recommend that. And then again, on your pro, uh, excuse me, live tuning, you're gonna go with minimum downforce. Everything else is irrelevant, but definitely minimum downforce for drag racing. All right, that is it. Let's go back and make this thing drift around. All right, so since this is a traditional rear wheel drive car, we're gonna set this up with the rear wheel drive drift setup and see how it does, and if we have to make adjustments, we will. But for the suspension on a rear wheel drive drift, you're gonna look at speed cross suspension. I'm gonna go with super speed cross. We're gonna leave the drag tires on, and then we're gonna swap the differential to a pro drift differential. Now, I'm gonna swap the gearbox back because I always forget to swap the gearbox, so I'm gonna put it back to a seven speed. It's not gonna really affect our drifting here because we're using an automatic transmission. So we're gonna leave it there on the seven because I don't wanna to forget to put it back when we go to build the off-road car. So this is it. Let's go and test this thing out and uh, let's see how it does. Oh my God, dude, this thing slides forever. Oh, jeez. This is brilliant, dude. Oh, that's so good. 82,000, dude, what? What is this? Ah, oh, it almost beat my top score, dude. My top score is 89,496. 82,000 on that drift section. Oh, let's go have some fun.
Oh, jeez. All right, I freaking love this drift build. This is one of the best drifting cars, I think, in Need for Speed Heat. I don't think it's top five, but it's up there, man. It's definitely top 10. This thing scores high, it drifts well. You got a lot of control with it. This thing is great. It's absolutely great. Let's show you the build card. All right, that same forged 3.8 liter V6 with the Ultimate Plus engine parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo and the Ultimate 5x3 pound NOS. The interesting part about this, or the most important part, is the suspension. Super Speed Cross Suspension, Elite Brakes and Elite Drag Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite Gearbox and Pro Drift Differential. And the auxiliaries are not important, but I use refills and duration. And my live tuning settings are the same as I had for the drag build. Now, don't be afraid to increase your steering sensitivity here. You can definitely increase it and still get the same results. The only difference will be that it's a more snappy steering. It'll be more responsive. You might oversteer a little bit if you open up the steering and put it at high, but you can definitely do that and it's it is beneficial for drifting as well, but plus three steering sensitivity, minimum downforce, traction control off, drift style brake. The drift style you can use gas as well, but this car does very well with this exact setup. So that's it. Let's move on to the off-road build. All right, to make this an off-road car, like always, we're going to swap the suspension, the tires, and the differential. So we'll go with the rally suspension. We're going to drop the off-road tires on it. Let's see here off-road tires and then we're gonna drop the rally diff rally differential in it and that's gonna be our drag excuse me drag where did it drag our off-road build all right before we test this on hdv2 let's just explain the live tuning just a little bit to you for this car for a track build the car is not as responsive on the steering which is why i had to increase the steering sensitivity and what that does that problem gets worse in the dirt because you have a tendency to slide around a little bit. So you need that little bit of extra steering sensitivity generally in the dirt. So my live tuning is gonna be steering sensitivity maxed. Remember on the track build, we have it at three. Or dirt build maxed. Downforce all the way down, gives us that top speed on the dirt. And we're gonna leave the traction control off and we're gonna leave it drift style on brake. That's gonna help us in some of these turns. All right, let's give this a shot. HTV2 test. I think the worst part about this is that it's not gonna get off the line at all. It's literally gonna just sit there and spin its wheels. It's crazy, it has zo no traction. Look at it. Oh, actually it didn't do too bad. It's a slow start, but not too bad, dude. Not too bad, I thought it was gonna be much slower than that. All right, here we go. Oh, it's definitely got off-road speed. We're gonna have to increase the downforce. It is way too slidey. Right, let's increase this downforce. And then uh, we're gonna reset this race. We're gonna do two notches. Let's go, test number two. Much better start, actually. Felt good. Still feels like it wants to slide. Which is okay. Just doesn't want to gain traction. I feel a little bit timid to, to steer it because it wants to slide so much. See how it gets a little wild there in the back? Doesn't want to catch traction. That's going to actually hurt its time overall. It's fast. When it gets traction, it's fast. Let's see how, how it's just sliding constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It slides. Makes it to where using NOS in the dirt, you really need to be on a straight. See how it's still sliding? Rear wheels still haven't caught traction yet. You see those tire marks? Yeah, it is it is insanely slidey.
Let's see what kind of time we can get, though. Wow, that was pretty good. I think it slides way, way too much to have a super fast time. But 151 is really not bad. I anticipate this doing much better on Rumble. But we're going to write this time down and we're going to see how it goes. I think we can improve that by a little bit, but not by much. Um, but we're going to write this one down for now. 151.9. And then we're going to move on to Rumble. And uh, we'll see how it does with its combined score. I think... I think this car is decent off-road. It feels good. It's really fast in a straight line. It just doesn't have traction. So we're gonna we're gonna run this, and then what I'll do after I see the combined times, I think what I'll do is increase that downforce. I'll run it again off video so you guys don't have to watch it, and uh, we'll see if the times are better. Here we go, rumble test number one. Takes off much better in the dirt. God, this thing is fun to drive, though. Definitely fun to drive in the dirt. When you're getting straight after a turn, the NOS really helps. It helps uh, straighten out the car and give traction. It's actually quite nice. This car is definitely way more suited for Rumble, 100%. Alright. We're on this final lap now, and it's feeling really good. I'm passing people left and right on this lap. Get out of here, second place! What do you know about this Mustang? And we're looking at a 313. So although the car feels really good in the dirt, it's kind of performing like an average dirt car, but it slides so well, it feels so good to drive in the dirt that I would definitely recommend it for sure. Um, 313.33, let's see where that puts it. All right, those combined times puts it at 505.2, which is actually, like number 16th on my off-road list. I'm not gonna go back and test this again. I actually prefer this setting. So it didn't do bad on HTV2, but it felt really good on Rumble. So there's gonna be this balance that you have to play. And I think most of the dirt tracks are more like Rumble. HTV2 is a little bit more tight, not as wide open. And it performed really, really well on Rumble. So I'm leaving it just like this. Let's go ahead and give you the build card so you know exactly how to build this thing. All right, same forged 3.8 liter V8 engine, excuse me, V6 engine, Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo and the Ultimate 5 by 3 pound NOS. We got the Super Rally Suspension, Elite Brakes, Elite Off-Road Tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, and the Super Rally Differential with NOS refills and NOS duration. As far as the live tuning goes, we've got maximum steering sensitivity, downforce minus three. So plus five steering sensitivity, minus three on the downforce, traction control off, drift style on brake. And that is it. Let's go ahead and just summarize this and show you the ranks for each of the different genres of racing we've got going on here. All right, so I didn't talk about this earlier in the video, but during my testing, when I was running my times for Arian, this thing really blows i mean it's terrible it is not it's not a good racing racing car I, I wouldn't recommend racing this against anyone at any time it doesn't matter what your build or their build is just don't race it it runs a 305 on arian which is near the bottom of the list and on sonic i ran a 246 so it's really just not fast on track racing. I just really wouldn't recommend it. Stay away from it. And the same thing as far as drag racing goes. It's really just not a good drag car. Now, that is totally antithetical to everything we know about Mustangs in real life. They actually, American Muscle is great drag cars, but not this one. Just don't use it in drag. Off-road is actually pretty decent. It's about the same as that BMW i8 that we just tested earlier in the week. This thing is actually pretty good. It's in the middle of the pack, kind of towards the top, but you know, 15th, 16th place. It's actually pretty good. Um, I would definitely recommend it for off-road. It's definitely not the fastest, but 
it's something that you can use for sure. And now for the kicker, for the place that this thing really, really excels at, and it was kind of unexpected, but kind of expected. We had a couple of people that tell me that this was a great drift car, and I just was like, eh, I'll check it out whenever I get to it. This is an amazing drift car. This is definitely top 10, very close to uh, the top five drift cars in the game. This thing is really, really good. And the setup that I gave you is for an automatic transmission. Make sure you use it. If you're using a manual transmission, you can switch to speed cross everything on those three parts that I mentioned, switch to speed cross, uh, suspension, diff, and speed cross tires. And if you're using a manual transmission, that might be a little bit better, but keep in mind, it's gonna be really, really slidey. You have to be on your game when it comes to your throttle control. But if you're running in, in an automatic, this is definitely a great drift car. It was very, sort of a surprise to me. People told me I didn't wanna listen, and uh, this is a great drift car. I'm super, super happy with this car in terms of a drift. That is the only way I'm gonna use this car going forward. All right, guys, if you have any questions about this one, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter or Discord. You can join the Discord. There's a link in the description down below, as well as my Instagram and Twitter links. Um, I look at every DM, and I'm not super on top of the comments anymore. We've just gotten a lot of comments, and uh, I'm more on top of DM. So if you have any questions, send it in a DM. If you have good comments and, or, or things that you want to see on the channel, you can leave it in the comment section. I read it, but I don't necessarily respond to every single one, not at this time. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next wrong build video. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching another one of my videos. You could be watching anything else on YouTube and you are here watching my channel. So thank you so much. Shout out to all the militia subs. Trigger out.